Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's a consumer product, a remote control for cars. Remote control alarm. Aha! So the remote is doing running codes. Pretty cool. Our code hopping is really cool. And the guy that gave this one to me said I should expect to find something really cool and interesting in here. So there is a technical funny funny design in here. So this is the main unit and this is the antenna, right? <laughs> this is very long. Really? What kind of frequency range is this? And, and as always, I just screw around with stuff before I read the manual because that is totally how I find it more fun. So we've got a lot of different connectors and more connectors and stuff. And this is the little funny, funny sensor. Ooh, look at that. What does that, does that say? Adjust of shock sensor. So this is where the funny, funny is. Shock sensor. Of course, some relays with some numbers on them. So they can interrupt the cars and doors and stuff. Some wires for uh, things. And this one, I don't know what that is. What the heck? And okay, two remote controls. I can't wait to figure out what frequency range this is. So. How do we test this? Can we make, oh, we need to power this up, right? Hey man, I need to read the manual to figure this out. Damn it. Okay. Three wires here needs to go into, Ooh. So there isn't another connector with three. How uh, difficult. I was expecting a little red and a little black wire just so, and here we got two. All right, I need to consult the manual and then I will come back a lot wiser. So inside the remote, four screws to open it and with really nice brass inserts for the threads. And, oh, there's even power in the battery. That is pretty cool. But where is, Ooh. But where is the crystal or the resonator or the antenna? Let's have a look. So up here, this tiny little loop is the loop antenna and this is the capa uh, trimmer capacitor to get this in resonance. So this is the chip that is doing the transmission or the encoding or Microcontroller or the intelligent things, right? Looks like that, right? But where's the... Is everything internal? I don't really see a lot of the stuff that I was expecting to see here. Because normally there is something that gives you the exact frequency. Really? So here's my normal pickup coil. I just put near the transmission antenna and then just put it like this, right? And then push the button. And then this is my spectrum analyzer set up for four, three, four megahertz center and 20 megahertz span. Look at that. So, of course, this is the normal frequency. 
and you can easily see a lot of mod modulation here so there's a lot of data coming out of this thing and what I found out is this microchip HMC or what the heck it is it is it called let's get the the better glasses yep yeah. HCS300 so that is a jumping code pulse generator and pulses they're just coming out of this it's uh, not generating any RF frequencies but this little black thingy over here is not a transistor as it looks no it's the oscillator and everything in one little three pin device isn't that just fantastic so this is all you need the data generator and the oscillator in one simple transistor look-alike thing so that is what it's doing not a lot so it's supposed to be super cheap but why is this antenna so long that is a little bit odd okay let's look inside this the main unit all right inside the main controller box and of course we find a microchip controller the pic 16 and the reason why i really know that it's a microchip in here is because the transmitter is a key lock um, encoder and to be able to decode this data you need to include include um, a hexed version um, of this decode library and they don't provide the source codes so that means it can only be done if you're using a PIC microcontroller so this is a good way to be sure that you're buying more parts from them of course so the receiver is a 4 watt AM no IF or anything at all and then there's the detector so it's just an AM detector so this will provide very very short range but we don't really need a lot of range anyway so who cares also you see this is from 1997 so it's quite old and it also really looks old <laughs> We don't really see a lot of SMD components or anything. This is just really, really cheap. So this is, oh yeah, we got a five volt regulator and it's running on four megahertz. Three relays here and those relays, they can just drive some other, other relays. What did you expect? Yeah, and this is an EEPROM to store different uh, settings and whatnot. Yeah, so far not impressed, but let's look inside this thingy. Ooh, screwdriver. Uh, now I'm super happy about this one, because look at this sensor here. <laughs> you are not going to believe it. Can you see it? This is a magnet, right? And this is an inductor. So what happens when you move this, shake this? So this is actually a very, very low frequency microphone or vibration detector. Right, so there's a lot of mass in this thing. And look at this. So the inductor goes to ground and then through the trimmer. It even says minimum and maximum sensitivity. And then the output goes to a op amp, right? some diodes and capacitors for timing we are definitely going to power this up and play with it oh, I'm 
I'm actually happy this works. So here's what I did. I soldered some wires on this thing. See, every time I just push my fingers a little bit like this. And it's amazing how sensitive it is. That's really crazy. You could never do this without with a microphone or anything else. Oh, there's actually a little red light here that gives an indication on if this works or not. Let's turn off the light and see if this is better, right? But that is really, really cool. I'm gonna save this PCB because that is really, really funny, funny thing to, thing to show to everybody. A shock sensor. Alright, so that was definitely worth looking into. I hope you had fun. Please come again.